Secret Terror Trial is Assault on British Justice. A major terrorism trial is to be heard entirely in secret, in a totally unprecedented departure from centuries of open justice, it can be disclosed. For the first time in British legal history, two men charged with serious terrorism offences will be kept anonymous and the press and public will be excluded from their trial, the Court of Appeal heard. MPs and civil rights campaigners said it was an outrageous assault on the principles of open justice and set a very dangerous precedent. Prosecutors have successfully applied for the case to be heard in private on grounds of national security. Of course it was national security. What else could it be? But the media organisations are trying to overturn the decision. Journalists have up until now been banned from reporting the fact that a trial was to be heard in secret. Hmm. Secret courts, hmm? I know of another country that has secret courts. The dictatorship that is North Korea where now they're even enforcing the type of haircut that students are allowed to have. The UK is often held up as a beacon in the world of freedom and democracy, but obviously this is clearly now only by people who can't find their ass with both hands. So in this beacon of so-called freedom and democracy, we've had secret family courts for years. Something that goes against everything we've been told about freedom and democracy, secret courts. But we're told that we have to have secret family courts to protect the children. Everything for the children. And now we have the first terror trial to be held in a secret court. They are of course claiming that they can't be open and honest about this trial in this allegedly open and honest country because as I said earlier, national security. I understand completely if, as the part of the trial, details of how to make, say, a biological weapon were to be discussed, then this information should, of course, be withheld under national security. As a country, we've been through World War I. We've also been through World War II. We've also been through 50 years of a Cold War without the need of secret courts. But in 2014, we are being told that we have to have secret courts because of a couple of ragtag alleged terrorists. Now, this is a part you need to pay attention to. The only reason they need secret courts to try these so-called terrorists under national security is quite clearly to stop the country finding out that these terrorists, like almost every other so-called terrorist, are in fact actually puppets of the intelligence services, and they have been working full-time with MI5. This is the only obvious conclusion that a thinking man can draw. Why else would they need a secret court to try these guys? Look at Abu Hamza, came out in his trial in America, that he was in fact working for MI5. Arjun Chowdhury is widely accepted as an MI5 asset. Look at Haroon Rashid Aswat. He's believed to be the mastermind behind the 7-7 bombings and the failed 21-7 bombings. And whilst the British police force were out looking for him, MI6 were hiding him. But the, what they had in common was they were all emigrant groups in Britain recruited by this al Muhajirun group. They were headed by, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Captain Hook, right. the uh, Imam in London, the right. Finsbury Mosque, without the arm. He was the head of that organization. Now his assistant, was a guy named Aswat, Harun Rashid Aswat. Aswat, who they right. picked up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Aswat is believed to be the mastermind of all the bombings in London. From the, on the 7 7 and 7 21, this is the guy, we think. This is the guy, and what's really. The, the entire British police are out chasing him, and one wing of the British government, MI6, or the British Secret Service, right. has been hiding him. Look at Michael Adebalagio, one of the Woolwich attackers. He was offered a job by MI5. They do this to keep the public in fear, because a public in fear is easier to what? Control. That's right, it's all about control of the public. Even the New York Times reported in 2012 that the so-called terror attacks in America would not have happened if the FBI had not planned and organized these attacks. They do it so that they can stop them right at the last minute, look like heroes, ask for more budget, keep the public in fear. Job done. Then we have of course the West funding Al-Qaeda in Libya to overthrow Colonel Gaddafi. 
It was an open secret that we were back in Al-Qaeda, unless we forget that NATO killed, some reports say, over 60,000 innocent people during their draconian-sounding no-fly zone, which actually meant bomb the crap out of Libya as often as we can. Now, Libya is so free because of NATO's actions that tens of thousands of Christians have since been beheaded by Al-Qaeda, and the country is far, far worse than when Gaddafi was in charge. We've also been covertly funding and supporting the rebels in Syria, who are again Al-Qaeda. And do you remember the outcome of that citizens committee that investigated the Benghazi terror attack? It happened to conclude that America had switched sides in the war on terror to support Al-Qaeda. Unbelievable. My point here is to emphasize that the intelligence services of the West find Islamic muppets, ferment them, they wind them up, they also provide them with materials, etc. And just as they're about to pull the trigger, the attack is foiled so that they can look good, look like heroes, get more funding, keep the public in fear. Job done. This is why they need secret courts to try these terrorists, I would suggest. Because amongst all the evidence, MI5's fingerprints will be all over it. If the terror threat from Al-Qaeda was real, then we would have more transparency in cases like this, not none. And the evidence would be thrown at us daily by the likes of the BBC and Sky News. It's all a joke. It's all fictitious. It's all fermented and made up by the intelligence services.